I'm Julie Faithan Balzer, and it's time to feather our nest with items we create to personalize our space. If you've never sewn or are a lap seamstress, I have an easy way to get you back sewing with a simple pillowcase. So here it is, and it's actually a pre-bought made pillowcase. I just added some decoration. I've been dyeing my own fabric, and I have a lot of mistakes. That's the best way I'd put it. But the nice thing is, when you cut it up, you don't really notice. So the first step is let's go ahead and create our design. So this is not hard. You don't have to be able to draw. I'm just using a marker. I'm not using a pencil. I'm not thinking too much about it. I'm just creating some basic shapes here. So sort of like a circle with a triangle on top that comes to a point. Now, if I have any problems, anything that's wonky, I can go ahead and just fix it. Like, let's say I want this to be rounded, not pointed. I wanna fix the angle here and make this more rounded. This is not about being pretty. This is not the finished art. This is just a template. If you wanna fix anything else, you can go ahead and do that. If you want that to be more straight, whatever it is. But you can see it's just a wonky design. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into something magical. So I'm gonna place it into my scanning mat. And then we're gonna scan it into the electronic cutter. So scan and go ahead and get that started. Now just a note about the fabric. One thing I'd like to point out, these two fabrics are not two fabrics. They're cut from the same piece of fabric, but because it's a hand dye, you get a very different look. So you can see how much cutting makes a difference. The other thing to note is I have put some fusible web on the back, which is basically a heat activated fusible, which makes the fabric really great for cutting. It doesn't ravel and it's gonna allow me to easily apply it to the pillowcase. So once my design has scanned in, then we're ready to start a little bit of manipulation. So I'm gonna see it pop up on the screen, and there it is. I'm gonna pick the outline mode. Just drag in these little red arrows so it's nice and tight. And then let's go ahead and save it into the machine. So now that it's saved, this is where that manipulation comes in, where we're going to be able to create this file. So I'm obviously not very good at geometry, but the nice thing here is the machine's gonna do all the work. So I have my one little piece, and I want to resize it so that, I know that this is a 12 by 12 square, so I wanna resize it so that the height is less than six inches, so that it will fit on here, so we're gonna just bring it down. It doesn't really matter, it's kind of arbitrary what it is, and let's say I wanna stretch it. I'm just gonna turn off the aspect ratio, and actually let's make it narrower, not taller. Looks good. So then I'm going to go ahead and make, there be four of them, and you'll notice it only picked up the outline. That's why it didn't matter if it was messy. So I have my four, and now we're gonna to start to rotate and spread them out. So this one is gonna get rotated essentially 180 degrees. This one is gonna go 90 degrees this way. Oops, that went where I didn't want it to go. 90 degrees this way. That's the great thing about an undo button. I wish life had an undo button. And once I have gotten all of these shapes, then it's just a matter of lining them up so that they're all on here and that they're all relatively, I'm using the grid lines that I can see here on the screen to line these up so that they're all hitting around where I need them to. And as soon as I'm sure that they're overlapped and that they look good to me, then I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them, weld them, and ta-da, I have one big beautiful shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and unload that. And I have my fabric with the fusible already loaded onto a cutting mat with the fusible up, which is why it looks kind of whitish instead of seeing all the color. The other little trick that I'm gonna show you is I'm going to rotate this so that it is more on an angle and that's gonna allow me to actually make it even bigger. So once that's set, I'm gonna say okay, and we're gonna go ahead and let this guy 
cut out. It kind of reminds me of pineapples. Now I happen to have some pieces that are already cut. And I also made these extra little bits. Now what these are is my electronic cutter has a bunch of built-in designs. And so what I did is I just, uh, see if you can see this, I just took two hearts and I welded them together. So then all I'm doing is taking a hot iron and just holding it down in place, and that is gonna fuse everything. But I have one that is already fused, so let's head to the sewing machine to do the decorative stitching. I'm going to remove the arm right here of the machine so that I can open the zipper and I can place this right under here. I might have to lift the foot a little extra to get that under. Then once it's under, you're gonna kinda wiggle it around, manipulate it, don't let it be the boss of you, you're the boss of it. Put the foot down and go ahead and stitch. And again, this is decorative stitching, so all you need to be able to do this is a straight stitch. You don't need anything else, so I'm just gonna stitch straight, pick it up, pull it out, you know, go back. Now I am using a white thread on here. You could use a variegated thread. I just wanted something that would contrast because again, it's decorative, it's not functional. I just want to be able to have something that I can show that I stitched on. You can see how much even with the zipper, I can manipulate this around and really get it going. And if you get your threads a little bit caught, you can always just take a pair of scissors and clip in. But then you just continue stitching along, raise that. Now, if you're more familiar with free motion stitching, you can also do that. It's just really whatever's gonna make it super easy for you. So I'm just gonna use the thread cutter here. And you can see that when you just use a little bit of decorative stitching, it adds a lot. So if we look back at the finished pillowcase, I think what you'll see is that it's hand dyed fabric, it's all this beautiful stitching, and it really makes something that otherwise would be plain and boring into something fantastic.